New to Formula One? Or just as obsessed as we are? Welcome back to another episode of Formation Lab, where we teach you all the dirty details that you need to know to be the best Formula One fan that you can be. You are live with the Hornsby sisters. I'm Katie. And I'm Megan. Hello, and welcome back to the Formation Lab. Today, Megan and I are so excited to chat all about our favorite fearless leaders, the team principals. I can bet that many in Formula One would claim to have the toughest, most responsible, or the most tedious job in the organization, but I can guarantee that team principals have the strangest, most insanely complex role in the whole team, if not in the whole world of sports management. Outside of the drivers, the team principal is the most visible to the general public. That has only been further heightened by the rise of Drive to Survive, where we see the personalities of the team principal in full view for everyone to see. The good, the bad, and more often than I would have thought, the ugly. Previously, the role of team principal was the team owner. So the team's personality was always tied to who the character of the team principal was. Now the team principal is almost always a hired role. Unless you're Toto Wolf, who owns 33% of Mercedes Petrona Formula One team, who is the team principal and CEO. At its root, the simplest definition of the role of team principal is it's the person who is in charge of a certain constructor during each race weekend. Like a CEO of a company, they run the team. It's more complicated than just being a CEO because they, in fact, report to a CEO of a larger company. McLaren is a perfect example of this. Zach Brown is the CEO of McLaren and Andre Seidel is the team principal. So Andre reports in to Zach Brown. McLaren is a little bit of a weird structure though, as we see Zach Brown being almost more visible than Andre Seidel. But they work beyond just the race weekend. They are in charge of technical, marketing, sporting, PR, management, communication, human resources. They do a little bit of everything and they are always in demand. That's why it's so hard to fully explain what exactly a team principal does because they all do the job slightly differently on top of having so many different roles. Christian Horner is very different from Matteo Bonato, who is very different from Toto Wolf, who is very different from Andre Seidel. But it's all about adapting to what the team needs at any given time and any given place. You're running a team of anywhere from 200 to 500 to 1,000 employees as you're navigating the globe. In the majority of constructors, the team principal is the face of the team with a significant part of the weekend devoted to multiple media sessions. Within the weekend, we see them participate in the FIA Friday press conference, TV interviews, post-race sit-downs, one-on-one interviews, and less formal huddles outside the garage, the paddock, and the press areas. They're almost always talking to each other. I think that's one of the coolest things that we see in Drive to Survive is the conversations that they have between, between the team principals. The whole weekend, the goal is to present the team to the world in the best possible light. They get to celebrate the highs and the lows, and they are the first response to the criticism and the praise that the team receives. In terms of intra-team workings, they go to briefings, they meet with the engineers, and they are solving problems. In outer team work, they are meeting with other team principals, like I mentioned. They're politicking around the paddock, and they're being nosy. They're here, and they are causing kerfuffles between the teams themselves. On race day, they are seated at the pit wall. They are listening to the general channels, their pit wall channel where big decisions are made on race strategy. And we very rarely hear them on the radio communications during the race. Every once in a while, when it comes to team orders, they'll have to speak up. But most of the time, they're just congratulating or delivering news that is unfortunate. They often let the race engineer for that driver really deliver the news. So outside of race weekend, what are our team principals doing? Like we said, they have many roles. Let's start with one prominent role that they have, marketing. At the end of the day, they are the public face of 
the organization outside of the two drivers. That's why we most often talk about the drivers and the team principals when referring to a team. They're in charge of marketing, hospitality events, speaking engagements in the paddock club, dinners, social engagements, promotional engagements, sponsorship engagements, everything that has to do with presenting the company in the best light possible, the team principal is intrinsically involved in. Outside of marketing, they are functioning within a larger team, a larger team that is often working in many different locations, in many different countries, in many different time zones with many different cultures. So it is a lot to balance on a global scale, which requires that they really be essentially removed from day-to-day operations. That's why most teams have a team manager or a sporting director that is in that is responsible for the day-to-day operations of what's happening in the garage, while we have senior engineers and a racing director who's in charge of actually running the cars on top of a CEO, which is running the business, and sometimes even a factory manager, which is in charge of what's happening back at race base. Intrinsically involved in all of that is the team principal, who is constantly aware, watching, and keeping an eye on everything that's happening in each of those different sectors. Back at the factory, They're responsible for 100 plus specialists, many more if you're Mercedes and Red Bull, but they're all going around during those non-race weeks or the off season, having individual meetings with those different groups, meetings with the managers independently, meeting with each specific sector. The goal is to really have the team principal aware of what's happening day to day, but not actually dealing with the day to day operations. A massive part of being in control of all of these different specialist groups is dealing with the budget, which is just getting more and more and more difficult as we see the cost caps coming into effect. They're responsible in conjunction with their CFO to allocate money based on the needs of the greater team. With that, they have to balance the needs of marketing as opposed to engineering, as opposed to innovation, and making sure that every segment is able to optimize the budget they're given. Okay, so Megan and I are just going to spit back and forth on what we even think makes up a good team principal. And I think the first thing, the most important thing, is communication and social skills. They, Like you said, Megan, they're working with hundreds of thousands of people in different cultures all over the world, and they've got to be able to communicate between those people and their team and everyone involved. I think it's a constant balancing act between making sure that you're doing right by all the different race locations. I mean, I always think about Haas, whose home base is in the Carolinas. They have a small contingent in England, and then they themselves are just like a walking contingent around the earth. So how are you managing all three of those things, different time zones, different leadership styles in all of those locations and having to talk to people all the time. Yeah, I feel like their phones have to never be off. They're always constantly communicating. It's a full-time job. I think Gunther Steiner even like said in some article, I was reading it forever ago, he was like, my office is, is wherever I am with my laptop, whether that's in an airport, a hotel, in a car, it's a job that never actually stops, which I think we see in Drive to Survive, right? Yeah, we do. We do see that. We see that they're always on the move. They're always in communication. They're always talking. They're always taking meetings. It's, I would say it's probably one of the hardest jobs in the world. Definitely in terms of having to have your hand in so many different aspects at the same time. Which I think, and that goes back. Oh, sorry, you go. No, go ahead. Keep going. I was going to say, it just reminds me of like what Otmar Schaffnauer has said, um, because currently right now, Aston Martin is doing so much work to invest in their facilities. And so as Otmar is traversing the earth, racing and managing Lance and Sebastian and all of his team and dealing with Lawrence, (laughs) dealing with Papa Stroll is definitely not the easiest. He's managing a factory that's being built, an R&D setup, including a new wind tunnel including hiring more talent and not just talent, the right people that fit the Aston Martin view of the future while all managing to still try to win a race. Yeah, it's incredible. I don't know how he's in five different places at once. 
That's what I feel like you have to be. And in that in that sense where you've got the CEO who I would guess is very hard to please, you've always got to be on your A game. I can't imagine daily interactions with Papa Stroll and how terrifying it would be to get a phone call from that man. I would feel like I would always be ready to be fired. Every day. Live Every in day. constant fear of being fired. <laughs> but I don't actually think that he's like a bad dude. I just think he's very tough. He demands excellence. And I think that is one of the also one of the most important things is your relationship with your CEO. I could not agree more with that, especially because we see so many good examples of when it works. And we see some examples of when it maybe doesn't work so much, which can true, true, true. which can cause some team principles to disappear and new ones to replace them emerge. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. I uh I think when it works well, it works really well. And my greatest example of that would be McLaren. I think Zach Brown and Andre Seidel work really well together. I think they show that throughout Drive to Survive and how they talk about one another and how they acknowledge and respect each other. But I can also see where it could go very, very wrong. Yeah. And that kind of leads me to my next one that I was going to bring to the table is you have to be a quick decision maker. It's a quick moving sport if you haven't picked up on that already. And you have to be smart. If you and weren't aware. If, it's... <laughs> if you weren't aware. And you just have to be smart and make quick, sometimes lasting decisions. And luckily these they are able to access their wealth of knowledge from their incredible backgrounds in motorsport. I would say Christian Horner is one that is phenomenal in making these quick decisions. On the pit wall, he sits next to Will Courtney, Red Bull's head of strategy, and you can always see them chit-chatting back and forth. That's also another very important relationship, the one with you know your head engineers, because that's, that's race That's race day decision making. And you've got all of them who have their own idea of how the race might go. And sometimes it comes down to what Christian Horner has to say. I think now is a perfect point to also mention, now that we're talking about this, is that they're also working with consultants. So you mentioned Christian Horner. He has Helmet Marco consulting him or consulting with him for both Red Bull and AlphaTauri. So that's another relationship that Christian has to navigate as a team principal. And I always I feel like we also have to mention here Toto Wolf's relationship with Nikki Lauda. Because while Toto is the CEO and the team principal, when Nikki Lauda was alive, he was Total Wolf's team consultant, but he was also Total Wolf's best friend. Yeah, and so right hand man. I think that right hand, they had dinner tonight. They had wow. They had dinner together every night. They were always talking about racing and you know, working with a consultant who you trust with all of your race decisions, but you're still ultimately responsible to the larger team. Having that consultant have a good team. That's a lot of relationships that you have to navigate. And it's a lot of male, male relationships that you have to navigate. Yeah, which (laughs) I don't know if I I don't know if I want to say that in the podcast. (laughs) I was going to say all I'm going to say is I'm glad it's not a bunch of women in the garage. It would. I don't know. I think that would be incredible to see. It'd be petty as shit. It'd be petty as hell. But we'd have more drama, which I guess we don't really need. (laughs) Claire Williams did run a tight ship. She ran a tight ship. And she was with, it was, it's a gentleman's club. That's what it is. I was going to say that I'm honestly really impressed by the way that they do communicate since most men do lack in that area. (laughs) That's what I was going to say. And I, I took it back and then I, I'm out here putting it on record. We all know I co-signed this message. All right. There we go. I have my support. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. Now that we are aware that the communication between the males is much better than we probably thought it was going to be, I think we should mention here, and I'm excited to mention it, is that on top of navigating these relationships, it's about bringing the right people together. And 
Here's where I'm going to bring it Dak to Ferrari, the Italian run and operated company. So it does not surprise me that this is a characteristic that they tried to find in a team principal. So Matteo Bonato, team principal of Ferrari, has widely been known and has been talked about as being somebody who provides like harmony inside of a team. This was also written back when Ferrari was mm, struggling. So the fact that he was able to provide harmony in a time when the team wasn't doing well is impressive. But he's widely known for being not only a great leader, but also being able to bring and include everyone into this like family-like business structure. Doesn't mean that he isn't a businessman. He still does the tough stuff. He fires. He yells. I can't imagine him yelling, but I bet he does. In Italian, Harry no Potter less. glasses. Vaffanculo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wrap up with, and I think the glue that holds everyone together is they are passionate for motorsport. Live it. They love it. They breathe it. They read it. They do everything about it. And Gunther Steiner once mentioned, like, this isn't this isn't a job. It's it's a lifestyle. If I was here to do it for the money, there are plenty of other jobs out there that pay way better. We wouldn't see them doing this if they didn't love it and that's what really brings it all together and that's the cherry on top of being a great team principal is your love for formula one your love for racing and the racing community and your willingness to spend what probably 200 ish plus nights away from your family your f1 team is your family and your at home family is a part of your f1 team too which we see in drive to survive with the families that we get to meet of the team principals. I will say it. I think that is probably the best thing that Drive to Survive has given us. Regardless of your issues with it, the window into life beyond what happens Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is amazing. And getting to actually understand these characters that we see on TV, we see in interviews, we read about beyond just their racing life. I think I gained a lot of respect for some of them because I came to understand who they were outside of. And to get to understand their character, the way they communicate with each other, the way they communicate with their drivers. We get to see those tough conversations as well. I mean, we've seen Gene Haas and Gunther Steiner yelling at each other. You see it all. There's no closed doors. And it has really done wonders in showing me what really makes up a team principal. Absolutely. And to piggyback off of that, I just had this thought. I think it's nice to see them in maybe not a, a marketing PR light into seeing their unfiltered who they are when they're upset. One um, moment comes to mind. I think it's, no, I don't think. It is Toto Wolf. I'm fairly confident he's on his, the phone with his wife, Susie Wolf. Also huge into motorsport. The team principal. Team principal, former racer. So she gets it. I'm assuming she asked, like, how was your day at work? Was it a good day at work? And he was like, it's an absolute shit day at work. And <laughs> oh, yeah. that level I of honesty. I can't honestly, talk to you right now. Yeah, yeah. it was like, it, absolute shit day at work. Like, I think it's just the unfiltered, unvarnished, un-PR perfected view into how difficult it is to do this incredibly strange job. So ultimately, it is the team principal that is responsible for the success of the team. We've seen Total Wolf take home seven consecutive world champions. We see Christian Horner fighting for his first world title, Zach Brown aiming to be in the mix, and Mattia Bonato trying to bring back a successfully historically dominant team. Each team principal has taken a very different road to their current position, and each of them brings a different formula skill set to the team. Many of the skills we addressed are necessary for other professions like elite sports management, te technological businesses, or lobbying professions. What makes Formula One principles different from every other profession is that one person has to do them all. So yeah, it's a pretty unique position. Thank you so much for listening to another episode. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us at Dirty Driving Pot on Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, stay dirty.